Hi friends, how are you? Welcome to our weekly installment of Ask Me Anything. My name is Jasmine Starr. I'm a photographer and business strategist from Newport Beach, California. And every week I go live to make sure that we are talking about your questions and getting answers. So let's dive in. Actually, uh, JD, could you check my Facebook page to see if I'm actually live on my Facebook page? Because I don't think I am. Let's see. Uh, can you guys let me know? Am I live on my Facebook? On Yeah, live on my Facebook page. This just got like real awkward because I was like, am I live on my Facebook page? Um, as we figure that out, I'm going to dive into a question from Chrissy Schultz. I know the best way to get engagement is to give engagement, but what if that doesn't work? Maybe I'm not doing enough. So have you ever felt the same way? Like in the chat box, because I love doing these live conversations is because I get to hear back from you. And like, I want to make sure Chrissy doesn't feel alone. Like, do you ever feel like you're not getting enough engagement? Yes or no? Just type it right here in, in the chat box. Now, if you are feeling like I'm not getting enough engagement, or if you're saying, hey, I like my engagement, but I always want to get more, great. Let's have a conversation in three easy steps to see what it is you're doing. I like to go for the lowest hanging fruit and the quickest to get results. So three steps. Number one, I'm going to encourage you to leave a comment more than four words on 10 of your followers' accounts. So what is the easiest way to drive engagement? Well, go to people who already know you. Right? So every day I want you going to who is following me. You click on your followers and then you go and leave them a nice comment. And then they say, hey, I know this person. I follow him. I follow her. And since they left a comment on my account, they're, they're going to go and say, I'm going to leave a comment on his or her account. Why? Because they know you. There's a higher likelihood of them taking action instead of you just not being a stranger on the internet. Step number two to get easy, quick engagement is to post a poll in your stories and then respond to every person who voted. Now, here's the good thing when it comes to stories. On Facebook, if you want to use stories, and on Instagram, they share one similar feature, and that is the poll feature, like the yes or the no, right? Like, make it as easy as possible. So I'm going to give you an example. A couple weeks ago, my husband and I were debating, like, which is a better brunch food, pancakes or waffles? And because we could not agree, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take it to social media. And I did a very basic poll. Which is a better brunch food, pancakes or waffles? And y'all, let me tell you, like people had opinions. And at the end of the day, you want to know what one? Pancakes. Exactly. But if you put out a poll just to get to know your audience better, and let's just say only three people vote, awesome. What I want you to do is I want you to go to their poll revolt, their your poll results and see that like Susan X and Johnny123 and Sharon Chicago voted. I want you to go back and say, oh, hey Sharon, I'm so glad you like pancakes, so do I. Hey Johnny123, waffles aren't my jam, you're on my husband's team, right? Like all you're doing is you're going to be responding to their poll and that sends them a direct message. And then somebody's like, whoa, like Jasmine saw I voted on her poll. And then they're going to respond back to you in a direct message. Now, when you start communicating on a direct message that's private one-to-one, -one, the next time they see their post, they feel like they know you, like you, and trust you more, right? Ah, if they know you, like you, and trust you more, there's a higher likelihood of them leaving a comment, liking the photo, sharing it, tagging a friend. That is all called engagement. Number three way to drive engagement. Choose a hashtag and leave a comment more than four words on 10 accounts. Okay, so I don't want you to choose a hashtag that's just like a blanket hashtag, like something big, like summer love. I want you to choose a hashtag that your dream customer wants to be like a part of. Like what do you think, if you're an interior designer, is your dream customer using the modern home hashtag? If you are, you know, in marketing, is your dream customer using the hashtag digital marketer? I want you to think of the hashtag that your dream customer is in. And then what I want you to do is I want you to go to that hashtag. And then I want you to leave a comment on those on 10 accounts. And you want to know what? People are going to be like, who is this person leaving this comment on my account? And then they're going to go over to your account. And they may or may not leave a comment. But what you have to do is give the type of engagement that you want. Now, you say, but Jasmine, I do that. And I'm like, great. I want you to do that. And I want you to keep on doing that every single day. 
because it's as if like, I don't want anybody to ever think that social media isn't identical to working out. You want results? You got to work out. You want results on social media? You got to post and engage. This is not like a turnkey and done. I am engaging every single day with you. I'm here, right? Like for all intents and purposes, I could sit on my Facebook throne. Yeah, I'm not going to apologize. I could sit on my Facebook throne. I could like wear a crown and be like, my work here is done. Heck no. Facebook don't owe me squat. So I need to show up for you and serve you well. Let's get into another question from Sarah Pesci. What's the situation now with business Instagram versus personal Instagram? Does it matter anymore? Do you get less engagement with a business Instagram? I have not seen that. I have not seen that you get less engagement with a business account. That's not the things I've heard. However, I am always watching because Facebook, you have a Facebook personal account and then you have a Facebook page. There was a time that Facebook pages and Facebook personal accounts were getting the same amount of organic reach. But what has happened in recent years? Facebook decided to, to index personal accounts much higher than Facebook pages. So now what would we see? We've seen pace, Facebook pages getting organic reach that is between one and 2%. I suspect, since Facebook owns Instagram, that something like that could happen in the future. I'm not saying it will, but I'm always watching. But right now, I have not seen a difference between the two. Let's get into, if you have questions, yo, leave them here. Like, I'm all, I'm all about it. Like, please, leave your questions here. I get into the live questions in just a second. Uh, Chrissy asks, what do you suggest as far as content for businesses that are closed due to the pandemic, such as wedding planners? Events may not happen for another year. So Chrissy and anybody who is really struggling during the pandemic, Chrissy used an example of being a wedding planner. I will also talk about wedding or event photographers. I will talk about travel professionals, right? These are all people who are like, what am I going to post if I am not doing the work? And at this point right now, I have to tell you a thousand times over to repurpose content, I don't want anybody on the internet sphere to ever think that repurposing is a bad or ugly word. I am going to also encourage you to let you know that you are in a unique position to look back at old content, content that you're like, I'm not sure I'm going to post that. Remember the days of early 2020 when you had the option of like, you know, not really for me. I do. I used to speak at live events and I used to connect with other entrepreneurs and in March, every event in 2020 has been canceled. Guys, like that really like that hurt my feelings. Like finally, I'm just going to be real. I'll have a totally real moment. 2020, I wrote my journal. 2020 is my year, right? Like 2020 is the year that I'm going to step out and I'm going to do crazy stuff and I really wanted to expand my wings as a professional speaker. I finally started getting on stages that I was like, oh my God, it's happening. And every single event has been canceled. So while I was planning on creating content around that, I was like, okay, I still want to post videos. What po video post content do I do? So I went into a video archive and I was like, I'm finding video footage that I'm like, that will never work. And you want to know what? I'm repurposing it. What you're looking at right now is an example of a video that is on Instagram. I also posted a version similar to this on Facebook. This video had 23,000 views and I posted it less than a month ago. 23,000 views and I wasn't, ever, that footage was never gonna see the light of day. I was like, no. And I'm just like, wow, COVID is forcing us to get really creative and it's also forcing us to reevaluate what is good content. I was trying to be really precious with my content. I wanted my content to look and feel a certain way and guess what? The internet spoke. I put out something I wasn't excited about. I was like, well, it's time to repurpose this content. And guess what happened? It actually met with good things. So my invitation to you, sweet and brilliant friend, is hey, let's see if there's, a, like if you've shot a wedding and if you have photos from a wedding in 2018 and you're like, that's such a long time ago. Can you find one photo from that 2018 wedding? Can you find three photos and revisit? Say, hey, I really loved this wedding. So you're doing constant flashbacks as you build up momentum to doing weddings next year. Listen, there are people doing it and doing it really well. I want you to invite you to do the same. Um, okay, so Lee Van Houston, many of the accounts who interact don't allow responses. Does that mean they are bots? How do you suggest I interact then? Okay, so I like how uh, Lee said that many. Guess what? 
Many are private. That's true, but not all. I don't want anybody looking in any way, shape or form saying, well, because there's a lot of private accounts, I'm just not going to, you know, I'm not going to go and try. Girlfriend, boyfriend, keep on hustling. Keep on finding the public accounts to engage with. That's just the real answer. Denise, is it true that you have to have, is it true that you have words on your IG pic? It's a different algorithm versus a regular picture? Mm, not that I know of. But I can say, so Denise is asking, if you have words on your photo, there's a different algorithm? No, there's one algorithm. But I will say that studies have shown that quotes on Instagram perform really well because the study had said that people on Instagram are trying to find ways to self-identify. And the easiest way to self-identify is to read a, read something like today is my magical day. And you're like, today is my magical day. And then you like it. You're self-identifying with a, with a text. So, so text does really well on Instagram and crazy enough, text doesn't do as well on LinkedIn. So different platforms perform differently based on how people are interacting. Interacting. Ashley McLean, I love that you have so many followers and still respond to my DM like a real person to person. Yes, boo boo. Yes. I try my best. Listen, are there going, is there going to come a time where I can't respond to DMs? Maybe. Will I always try my best? Yes. So thank you for noticing. I totally appreciate that. And shout out to Paige who's actually on right now and she's helping this live chat to make sure that people are seen. So if you see Paige in there, give her some love. If you see Paige, drop a love bomb on Paige. Okay, let's get into some other questions. I'm actually really excited about this. So thank you for the invitation to actually ask this question. Glenda said, I'd love to learn more about shops on Instagram and Facebook. How do you set one up and how does the posting work? And Uma asked a very similar question. As you know, Facebook rolled out shops for small businesses. What are your thoughts on this? Would you happen to know if it's worldwide or only in the US? Now I have to say, when I read these questions, I'm not lying, uh, let's just be real. And then when I first read these questions, I was like, I don't wanna answer this question. This is freaking Googleable. But then I said, wait a minute. If I am here, I believe my purpose is to empower small business owners to show up in big ways. That's my purpose. So well, who am I to determine what is important or what's not important? So you wanna know what I did? I did a little freaking Googling just for you and I found out on facebook.com how to set up Instagram shopping. So all the slides you see from here on out are not my slides, you can find them on instagram.com but what I'm gonna do is I'm consolidating the information and I'm gonna synthesize it with you because yo, if you have a product-based business, if you are a service-based, if you're a photographer, if you're a coach, if you sell like a SaaS product, this is not for you. If you have a product, let's chat in four easy steps. Step number one, make sure you're eligible for Instagram shopping. Can you answer yes to all of the questions? Is your business located in a supported market? If you're like, what's a supported market? There are a lot of countries who would allow this, but some don't. So a supported market means you can go through, you click on that link and then you can see, is my country or is my region um, applicable? So answering yes to, do you sell physical goods? Does it comply with our commerce policies? Is your Instagram account a business account? So for those of you guys who have personal, but you have a physical shop that you want to set up, you have to switch it over to business. And is your account connected to a Facebook page? Oh, so if you don't have a Facebook page, you need to get one set up. Why? Because Instagram rolled out shops and it is one of the most popular features on Instagram that Instagram is helping monetize. So they want to do the same thing on Facebook. From a personal shopper's perspective, I love Instagram shops. I love Instagram shops. I can't even, my husband's sitting over here, I don't even want to admit this. Oh my gosh, back in December, we went to a Los Angeles Rams football game. We had a blast, but like, it was like a lot of football for me. I love football, but it was just a lot, okay? Over time, the whole nine. And so during one of the plays, I was shopping on Instagram. And in between one play and another, I bought a pair of jeans, I bought some socks, I bought a sweater, and then I was cheersing when Rams made a touchdown. I'm just like, yes, this is my dream life. My husband's happy. I'm happy and gonna be well-dressed. Okay, so I absolutely love it. Let's get into step number two, connect to a catalog. You're gonna have two options. To use a catalog manager, this is a do it yourself. Like you create your own catalog, but I want you to look at that option B, use a Facebook partner. Okay, 
So for anybody who has a Shopify store or a, I think it's called business commerce, like Shopify has plugged in to Instagram and Facebook's API. That means like their brain and they work synergistically. So let's say you have a Shopify store. You already have your catalog in Shopify. You can easily create um, buttons to Instagram shop, to your Facebook shop. If I were you and you're like, I'm so stressed, I don't have a lot of time, I would definitely use a partner instead of having to navigate a whole catalog in there. Step number three, uh, duh, sign up into the app. So once you go into the app, um, the process will take a few days um, and then soon you will see your shopping settings. So you have to answer yes to all of them. You have to upload your catalog and there's like about a couple day wait for your shop to get your proof reveal stores open. This is your last and final step. Create your first shopping post or story. Yes, friends, what happens here is when you, once you've been, once you set up your catalog and once it has been approved, you will then have a feature that nobody else but shops have. And that is where you can tag a photo you can press on the photo and you could tag certain items from your store so that when me, the consumer, is shopping on Instagram, I could tap on the photo and I could see, oh, this necklace is $49. That shirt is $14 or whatever the case may be. I click on it. I can add it to an Instagram shopping bag and then I check out. Can we just get a slow clap for Mark Zuckerberg? Y'all, I have bought... I have bought an, a customized embroidered sweater with my dog's face on it from Instagram shopping. I have bought pajamas from Instagram shopping. I've bought hair products. I've bought clothes. I just think it's so smart. If you have a store that sells physical products, I would 1,000% dive headfirst right into that. Speaking of diving right first, let's get into some Q&A. Yes and amen. Okay, we're going to get into this flash fire. I'm going to be heading into, oh, this is a great reminder. If you are a member of Social Curator, no, this is not a pitch because we're closed enrollment. You can't even get in if you wanted. But Social Curators, we have a coaching session at 11 Pacific Standard Time. Don't forget, we're going to get into some good stuff. Instagram stories and how to use them to turn into customers. Okay, so uh, Solvi Wright, do you have any trainings on resources I can use to create an opt-in and email list for people to come to my website? This is perfect timing. Solvi, if you go to jasminestarpodcast.com today, just today, or if you, go to, if you go to Spotify, if you go to iTunes, if you go to Google Player, today's podcast is 15 minutes and I walk you through exactly what you need to do to set up your newsletter. So friends, I got your back. Check it out. Jasminestarpodcast.com or anywhere you listen to your podcast. You can find it at the Jasmine Star Show. Okay, Dara, what are some tips for promoting a new product? Oh, excuse me, a new podcast on Instagram stories. So my process when we announced my brand new podcast, my podcast dropped in October. So I have been podcasting now almost six months. It's been very cool. It's a lot of work. And I love it because it's creative and I get to connect with people. So we did a warm-up period where we said, hey, we're dropping. It was kind of like a countdown. We're dropping the podcast. And in stories, I would be like, we're three days away. We're two days away. And then on the day that we dropped the podcast, we had like a contest and we had giveaways and people who shared it and people who left a review. We gave them a little like, like, a, like a small digital gift. It was a really, really great experience for us. So it was just like, to me, promoting a podcast came from transparency. Just say, you know, say like, hey, I'm dropping it. And then if you can add goodies along the way, I think that's always like a, a really smart thing to incentivize people taking an action on behalf of your podcast. Um, Christina Torres, might be a silly question, but is it best to go live on IGTV or use a pre-recorded edited video? Well, Christina, the good news is there's not a right answer but there is a right answer for your audience. So my audience, I get more traction on Facebook when I go live and not as much with a pre-recorded edited video. However, on Instagram, I go live and we get like great traction and it's fun, but pre-recorded edited videos on Instagram work better for me on that platform. So, you know, it totally depends on the platform and it totally depends on your followers on that platform. My advice is just test. Test as much as you can without saying, I'm doing it right or I'm doing it wrong. Just say, hey, I'm experimenting to see what my audience wants to see. Um, okay, 
So let's go into Trinity. Oh, Trinity. I love the way you spelled it. What are your thoughts on Instagram pods? Are they helpful or harmful to your account? Do they help or hurt your reach? Trinity and anybody else who is wondering, if you go to my blog, jasminestarblog.com, I wrote a whole article on like a hundred thoughts and ideas. Of, not a hundred. I was being dramatic. It was like five thoughts and reasons why I don't agree with Instagram pods. But just because I don't agree with them doesn't mean that they don't work. All I'm saying is from years of aggregated business insights and coaching and consulting is what I see with pods is that they have the potential to work. But I've noticed that over time, the pod becomes inequitable because not everybody is doing the same amount of work. So for people who are wondering what an Instagram pod is, an Instagram pod is a group of people who make the commitment to say, hey, I will go and engage with your post if you always engage with mine, because if engagement in the algorithm is good, if we all make this commitment, we can theoretically move our growth. But here's where things get a little bit tricky, is some people in the pod post three times a week, and some people in the pod post three times a day. And so some people in the group are always having to constantly engage with another person's account so that it doesn't feel dead. And then some people are like, I'm doing all this work and I'm not doing, I'm not getting it in return. And then some people are really active. So they'll engage with the post as soon as that post goes out. And then some people are like, I'm really busy. I'll get to it later. But if you're not engaging with a post and Instagram and Facebook won't tell you that when they measure engagement initially, like they won't say it's like within 10 minutes or within 30 minutes or within 60 minutes. But, but we know that the algorithm measures engagement pretty close to after when you post it. And then they determine, will we show it to more people based on early engagement? If your pod isn't engaging for like two, three, 10 hours later, then it was like, what's the point? So to me, there's just too many mitigating factors. I don't think it's bad. I just think it's like a lot of times what I see is a lot of mismanaged expectations. Okay, I have one more minute before I have to get off. Uh, Christina Torres, what are some uh, tips for working up a killer elevator pitch? Well, I mean, today is all about the podcast. Y'all, I have a podcast. It is 10 minutes on how to craft your elevator pitch. Now, for people who are wondering what an elevator pitch is, I've always believed, because what I've been told, is that you have to be able to explain what your business does in less than 30 seconds. Like if you're on an elevator with somebody from like the 10th floor to the first floor and you had to say what your business does, you gotta get it out. But there are effective ways and tips for you to do it. There's a strategy behind what it is. And so I walk you through the four steps on creating your elevator pitch. Now, this is not me trying to be like, go listen to the podcast. I'm just like, I'm saying like right now, Christina, I could tell you, you got to tell who you serve, what you do and the benefits. That's the short answer. Cause I got a minute before I got to go. But if you want to go deep, I'm telling you, you spend 10 minutes on this podcast and you learn how to speak about your business. That 10 minutes will probably work you up to $10,000 in the future. Yes. And amen. Okay. People, I love you a lot. I'm heading off into the social curator coaching. I'll see you guys there. Much love. Take care. God